Hey everybody, tonight we're going to show you how to assemble an Ultimaker Original Plus 3D printer. You can see here we have some of the parts that go together to make the frame, which is the first step. They're laid out flat now. Here we have the back, the left, the right, the front, and the bottom. And what we're going to do is put these together into an assembled frame. Now, what we've got so far is we've installed the parts that are required before we start assembling the frame and it was very easy. As you can see, the bearings have been pressed into place. Can you zoom in on that one there and show it? You can feel them with your fingers. You should be able to do it with your hand. If you have to use a tool, you might break the wood and need a replacement part. So push them in. It's a firm fit. There's On all of these panels are different places and the instructions are very clear about where to put them. The second step of our assembly was to install limit switches. And you can see here, this one is installed, but it's waiting to be adjusted after the assembly. These slots give a lot of travel. It's an important limit switch. Here's a few more. This one is fixed over here. And this one over here, and what they do is they limit the travel of the uh, 3D printing head. The third step was to install the two motors that drive the head horizontal position in X and Y. We're going to hear more about that later. This is the X motor and you can see its belt is going to drive the shaft here on this bearing. This is the Y motor on the left side and its belt is going to drive the other axis on this bearing. Okay, we want to draw your attention to one more thing about the motors here and that is that the orientation is important. The wires are going to come down to the bottom the drive belt is going to go up to the shaft. And so in order to put this thing together correctly, you must install the belt before you bolt the motor on. And to install the belt, you must first attach the drive pulley to the shaft. And again, that's with a two millimeter Allen key. So the final assembly will look like this in the vertical direction, wires down, belt up. This is the bottom panel and you'll notice that it's got a lot of helpful markings on it about where things are going to go and these are used during the calibration and setup of the instrument. Also you can see that we are installing these cable ties prior to assembling the frame and that's very simple. You just come in from the back and push them through. Now we start the fun part. I have laid out here the parts that we need to assemble the frame, begin putting it together into its full uh, structure. These pieces, these soft little pieces here, are cable stays and they're going to be attached with cables running through them. You'll need one of the two long ones for this step and both of the short ones. These are the fasteners. These take the two millimeter Allen key I showed earlier and here are the nuts that go with them and the suggestion is that this blue tape that they provide with the kit can be used to help with this part of the assembly. Uh, used to hold the nuts in place, used to hold the parts together. Uh, we're going to start assembling the panels and then not tighten everything down until we're completely assembled. This is the back piece. The recommendation is to place it down flat on a table and be very careful about moving parts around until we get everything put together. And we begin by putting the top piece, which is this one, into the holes at the top so that it sits up like this. Now we'll take the bottom piece shown here and we want to make sure we put the writing down. And that means the cable, these cable ties will be down. And so the bottom piece drops right in like this. And now we'll take the front piece, which you can recognize because it has our friendly robot here in the name Ultimaker. And the front piece is going to go like so. Yeah. Now, as you can see, this is rickety, so be very careful. Okay, now that we have our frame standing here assembled, we can do the next step, which is to insert a screw. On the top, we have one, two, three, 
four or five locations and then we'll show you in a minute flip over eight more on the bottom but the way this works is you insert the nut into that slot like so drop the screw down you can hold it with your fingers on both sides like that and then we use our two millimeter driver and just just enough to get it to you know be solid don't tighten it up yet okay here I'm putting it in to the bottom location you can see it's the same thing I'm gonna brace it with both fingers drop the screw down in take my driver just give it enough to tighten it and here's the last screw on the bottom inserting it again I can feel it on both sides and while holding it I'll drop in the screw now you can see I've installed all five of the screws to bolt the front to the assembly now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this entire mechanism and I'm going to lift it very carefully by the back so that it won't separate and rotate it ever so slowly over to give me access to install the screws on the bottom. You got to mind your cables here, not get them tangled up. Everybody's looking good. And now you can see I have eight, one, two, three, four on the top and four on the bottom to attach the back. Now I've, I've installed 13 nuts and bolts, eight on the back, five on the front. I've deliberately left it loose because we don't want to tighten it up until we put the left and right sides on. But before we do that, we need to install our cable ties. So first step in the process is to rotate it over. Again, very slowly and gently. so that we bring the motor and the right side up. So before we install the right panel, we have to install the right cable duct. This cable duct is a piece that slides onto the tongues before the right panel is installed. And now you can see I'm folding it over. You can use the blue scotch tape if you need to to make it stay better. And now I'm going to position the right panel. And the right panel will be positioned with its words inward, such that it sits down on what we've built so far, like so. That's a little bit harder to get it on because everything is more rigidized and more square. Okay, so now the right panel is attached and we're going to begin the procedure of installing the nuts and bolts. After we've installed 12 bolts and nuts, again loosely, we don't want to tighten up yet, I want to show you how the cable duct looks. It's folded over here in the back and it's going to keep our motor cable from getting tangled up in the mechanism. We'll route it down through and through this hole here in a little bit. The next step in our process then is to install the last side of our Ultimaker frame, which is the left side. Okay, don't forget to install your cable ducts before putting the side panel on or you're going to be taking it off and starting over. So this time on the left side of the Ultimaker we have a short cable guide in the back they call them cable ducts. So it goes on first side and then second side. So that cable duct is ready and along the front edge we're using the first of our two long cable ducts. And this cable duct attaches like this. It's impossible to get it wrong because the holes are cut in such a way that it only fits in one place. And then we put its second side down on the pegs. And again, if it won't stay, don't be shy about using the blue tape provided in the kit. Okay, now we're ready to install the left panel. The left panel has a motor on it. So be very careful about anti-limit switch. 
So be very careful about lowering the wires into the proper position. And just like the right panel, it drops down onto the pegs. There's the top, the back, the bottom, and there you go. Again, we're going to put in 12 nuts and bolts. Now our frame is basically assembled. You can see that I put an additional 12 fasteners, nuts and bolts, on this side. I still haven't tightened everything down yet. Um, I'll show you now, rotating this up, you can see another short cable duct in the back here is ready to be used. And in the front, the long cable duct is here in the corner ready to be used and this limit switch cable is going to go down that. And I'll call your attention to one more thing too. Before we tighten, we want to pay close attention to the spacing here. This is not quite seated all the way, but as we tighten it will become seated. You can see down here on the front, on the left side, this is not quite all the way down. As we tighten, we're going to be paying a lot of attention to this, trying to get it to be nice and even and all flush. So now we have the finished unit. I've been tightening up the bolts, flipping it over. I did all six sides once. Examined the gap between the pieces of wood and made sure it was okay. Rotated it, went through it a second time and snugged them down. And I'm doing the last row here. And what I want to show you is that you don't want to crank it. That's too much. Use your fingertips. Get a nice snug torque like that. Not too much. See, I'm tightening it up. The wood's very forgiving, but you can overdo it. And then here's the last one. So, here we have our completed frame. Now you can see that the cables are loose in here, and that's just not going to work because the moving action of the 3D printer all takes place. And so the way that the designers of Ultimaker have set this up, and it's quite simple and elegant, is with these cable ducts that I showed you before in the corner. So now we're going to take all of the cables and route them down through the cable ducts. You can see how easy they slide. Down here at the bottom, the connector's coming out, and we want it to keep on going all the way down on the bottom. And now I'm just going to pull it through. And then we'll do it with the other limit switch cable in this corner, the red one. And it's the same thing. It just goes right in here like this. And just feed it through. And again, you'll see it coming out the bottom down here. And I'm going to, again, reach in and pull it. Take out the twist. And then straighten up the cable duct. So now those cables are neatly out of the way and coming out of the bottom of the Ultimaker. Same thing, put it around and look at the back. There are two shorter cable ducts that we installed. And in the case of the one over here, we just have a motor cable that's going to go right down through here. Just like the limit switch did before. And again, you can see the cable is going down underneath the back of the bottom. And just like before, I'm going to tip it up and pull making sure I untwist it as we go. I don't have any problems here. Until I've got it pulled out straight. And then I'm going to reset the cable duct up back to its former position. And now that motor cable is in the duct and out of the way. In the back left corner, we have two cables that we need to feed through the duct, a motor cable and a limit switch cable. So first we'll start with the motor cable since it's the larger of the two. And again, make sure it goes down underneath the bottom, which it is. And once more, I'm going to pull it. 
get it out of the way. Now it's the limit switch. It also goes cleans really easy right down through the duct. And again, I'll pull it from the bottom. And then straighten up the duct. So now you can see we have plenty of room inside for our 3D printer head to move without tangling with the cables. The final part of the frame assembly involves attaching a few extra parts. There's this back plate and these two bottom plates that are going to go underneath the bottom. We're going to continue to use our two millimeter nuts and bolts, but to secure this guy, we're going to also use these lock nuts here. They have uh, black plastic, you can see that, that stops them from coming loose with vibration. Back plate goes on here, and as you can see, it's symmetric, and I kind of like a lot of letters showing, so I'm going to put the part number on the outside. The lock nut goes on here. So this completes the assembly of the frame. We've placed the two parts on the back. we put the back plate on here. And you can see that all of the wires come through the bottom. And we're going to route all this later. So for now, we're just going to turn everything back up to the upright position. And there it is, our completed Ultimaker Original Plus frame.